Hi, I'm Scott Humphrey, CEO of the World Floor Covering Association. Thank you for joining me for another Leadership Live. I'm sure, like myself, you have probably sat through more meetings in your lifetime than you would like to recount. I challenge you to make good use of that time. Evaluate the leadership in a meeting. I tend to find that they fall into one of two categories. There are those leaders that have to be the smartest in the room. So they surround themselves with doers, but not with thinkers. They're intimidated by too much knowledge coming from somebody else or someone being seen as stronger than them. Others understand that there's more power in the question than there is in having all the right answers. And so they inspire the team. They surround themselves with people that are actually stronger than them in given areas so that collectively they can come up with the best solution that benefits everybody. I agree and believe that there's strength in the question much more so than strength in the answer. With that in mind, I want to give you three questions that every leader should ask themselves. The first question is, where am I now? Evaluate where you are. What is your foundation? Where are you moving from? What are the things that you know you can count on in your own life? The second question is, where am I going? What's the goal? What are you hoping to accomplish? You may have multiple goals. They still stem from the same foundation, but Where am I going? What is the purpose? Where do I use the strengths that I identified in question one? And how do I use them to help me get there? And that is the third question. Question three is, how will I get there? What are the the paths that are possible? What are the obstacles in each path that I might say, well, I don't want to go that route because of this, or I do want to go that route because of this. How do I plan on accomplishing the goal? In 1953, Yale University surveyed their graduating seniors and asked, how many of you have set out specific goals for your life? How many of you have evaluated the path to those goals, have considered the obstacles that might come up with those paths, and have set a timeline for accomplishing the goal? 3% of Yale's seniors that year said, yes, we've done that. 20 years later, they surveyed the same group of seniors and found out that that 3%, the ones that had identified the goals, set out a path with the goals, understood the obstacles, and put a timeline in place, had accomplished more than the other 97% combined. It makes sense. There has to be a purpose and there has to be a path to get there. Charlie Boswell in 1958 had accomplished a task he'd accomplished before. He won the National Blind Golfers Association Golfer of the Year Award for the 13th time. Now, Charlie wasn't born blind. Charlie was blinded in an accident that occurred in World War II when he was trying to save one of his friends from an explosion in a tank. But being driven, he decided to take up a sport he had never done before when he got out of the military, and that sport was golf. And so not only did he take it up, but he became the best in the world with his handicap. Well... Charlie was honored in 1958, not just with the National Blind Golfer of the Year Award, but also with the Ben Hogan Award. Ben Hogan, being one of the greatest golfers of all time, was there to give him the award. And Charlie said, man, this is, this is on my life list. I've always wanted to meet you, but what I've really wanted to do is to play a round of golf with you, Mr. Hogan. And Ben Hogan said, well, I would love that. I'm inspired by your story. I've researched you, and it, it's, it, it was truly inspiring. And he said, well, would you play me for money? And he said, no, Ben Hogan said, no, I would, certainly I wouldn't pay you for money. I want to take advantage of you. And he said, well, are you a chicken? Now, if you know anything about Ben Hogan, he had a little bit of a temper occasionally. And so that fired him up a little bit. He said, no, but I can't take advantage of you. He said, then you are a chicken. And he said, all right, I'll play you. And Charlie Boswell said, $1,000 a hole. And Ben Hogan said, well, you just got to know, I'm going to play my hardest. I'm going to do my best. And Charlie Boswell said, I wouldn't expect anything less, Mr. Hogan. And Ben Hogan said, okay, then you just name the place and the time. And Charlie Boswell said, well, we'll play the course that we're on right now, and I'll play you at midnight tonight. See, Charlie understood where he was now. He was blind. He understood what he wanted to do, and that was to beat Ben Hogan, and he knew how he was going to get there. He was going to use the strength that he had, which was he was used to playing with no sight, and Ben Hogan was not. Listen, as a leader, ask yourself those three questions. Where am I now? Where am I going? And how do I get there? And challenge your teams, your children, your communities to ask the same questions so that collectively we can accomplish much more together than we can individually. Now go out there and lead.